If you're like me, you've probably spent a lot of your time and energy this year trying to figure out the best ways to take action on the issues that you care about. Maybe you feel like there's a lot going on. I think that that would be more than valid. And you care about all of the issues facing people in your community and around the world. But because there's so much going on, you don't know how to take action on it. You are not alone in feeling that way. Many of us have been especially grappling with how to respond meaningfully to the very real injustices experienced by people of color. But to make a difference, we have to take action. We can't just keep on wanting to do something. And so today on the show, we brought on an incredible guest who shares a simple plan you can follow with every problem you see in the world. She's going to guide us through how to make a positive difference. This is Sounds Good. I'm Brandon Harvey. Today, I'm talking with Danielle Koch, or you may know her as Oh Happy Danny on Instagram. She's an advocate, an illustrator who uses her art and writing as activism. She has nearly half a million followers on Instagram where she shares colorful illustrations and artwork that encourages and educates people on topics like anti-racism, allyship, voter suppression, the school to prison pipeline, and so much more. You have definitely seen a friend repost her beautiful and informational work, and you may have even reposted her yourself. There is no one like Danny. Not only does her artwork stand out because it's bright and beautiful, but it means something. Her artwork reveals her welcoming and passionate spirit, drawing you in and inviting you and all of her followers to engage meaningfully with the issues that affect people. I am so excited to share this conversation with Danielle Koch. She shares actionable steps for showing allyship and making a difference in our communities. I'm still thinking about it. It's been a few weeks since we recorded it. So I know that after hearing this conversation, you will be inspired and motivated to take a step to make the world better. In your guide on how to show allyship during a crisis, you created a roadmap to providing relief. And the first step that you offer is to pick a cause to focus on. And this sounds easy, but I know for me, this is often the part where things actually get the most stuck because there's this paralysis of, of what am I going to focus on? There's so many ways I could get involved, so many ways I can make a difference. I guess, can you... Walk me through this with an example. Yeah, for sure. So when I first made this roadmap, I was definitely thinking about, you know, systemic racism and the injustice that we were facing, um, especially towards the Black community. And so when I made this, I was seeing a lot of people who were saying, I want to help. I don't know what to do, though. And so there was just a lot of people with great intentions, but not sure how to hone in. So when I made the map and started with Pick a Cause to Focus on, I was aware that systemic racism, police brutality was top of mind, but people weren't able to funnel down and like narrow down what in that umbrella of things they should focus on because it's a really hard task to try to take something that big and be like, yep, I'm going to tackle that by myself. So (laughs) with this, I was like, you know, you're more likely to be effective and follow through with actual action when you're focused on a single cause. So let's say that you're a mom and you also happen to have a blog and you love blogging about motherhood. Well, under the umbrella of systemic racism, there's the issue of the motherhood mortality rate where Black women are more likely to die or face medical complications during childbirth. So how can you use, you know, a portion of your blog or your mission to focus on that specific cause? Like we need to combat the motherhood mortality rate in the Black community. That is a cause that you have picked to focus on. And so that is what I would say to someone starting out. And so instead of focusing on just the overall issue of systemic racism, you know, you're saying drill down into a specific part of this because you're going to have more ability to move the needle. It's going to be less overwhelming and it'll give you a more clear path to follow for the rest of these. 
Yes. And it's not to say that you don't still speak up when, you know, moments of injustice do occur or like you don't continuously fight against the larger system with your words, signing petitions, voting, donating. But at the same time, we want recurring action that becomes a part of your lifestyle, right? And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to narrow down. That is perfect. So the second step is to unpack the issue and study it. Why is that important before we even get towards the action parts? Yeah, I think that a lot of times we can get caught up in the excitement and the adrenaline that comes with undertaking something new. But what can happen is we spend a lot of time being ignorant of the very thing that we're trying to help and that can cause harm because you jump into a situation like, I'm going to be the savior here without fully understanding the nuances, the ins and outs, the history, things that have worked, things that have not worked, and being wise in the way you choose to contribute to this area. So that's why I think unpacking and learning is super important because the more you know, the more helpful you'll be. I know it's going to be a little bit different with every issue that you can focus on, but generally speaking, what's the best way to make sure that you are finding reliable resources, listening to the right people, and not falling prey to misinformation? Yeah, that's good. I think that's a big problem these days, right? But I would say an easier thing to do is to look for experts in this industry who are or in the area that you're focusing on who have already proven themselves to be contributors to that cause, who already have put in the research, have the credentials, and are really a thought leader in that area because as you're doing your own learning, you can glean from someone who's already in the middle of that work doing it. But also, you know, common practices, best common best practices when Googling and searching for information, you know, make sure you're looking at reliable sources, make sure you're reading books that come from people who know what they're talking about. You know, we don't just want to repost articles just because they look and sound good, but getting into the nitty gritty of that is what's going to make the difference and make sure that you are not pushing misinformation yourself. The third step is to assess local needs and partner with community organizations. Can you break down what that means here? Yeah. Yeah. I also believe wholeheartedly that for every issue, there is somebody on the ground already who's probably been doing it longer than you have, and is probably a little bit better at it. <laughs> not because not because they're better than you, but because there's a lot of organizations who have been on the ground doing this work for a long time, and definitely before 2020. So your chance of impact in your sphere of influence is greater if you're operating within your own community. And so instead of waking up saying, I'm going to start this brand new organization to do this brand new thing that I just learned about yesterday. Let's say, okay, who's already doing this work where I am? How can I get plugged in and either donate, volunteer my time, or lean into what they're already doing and become a part of that? You know, it's important to listen before we act because these organizations, chances are they already know what's more high priority and are more aware of the best things to do at this time. I've got an older friend, uh, a mentor, who used to say that when he was a kid, uh, they would start bands. And now our generation, we start nonprofits. And, <laughs> and, and he, he's essentially calling our generation out, essentially saying, you know, there's actually some power when you join and support an existing organization rather than trying to do something new on your own. You can have a greater impact that way. And it also reminds me a little bit of this quote that we use all the time at Good Good Good. It's you know it's this reminder that there are always people showing up and doing good. It's from Mr. Rogers. He said, when I was a boy and I'd see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. There will always be people who are helping. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what you're saying here, this idea that there are local community organizations probably already doing the work and you can join in and be a part of what they're doing. And it's really a sign of hope for me. Yeah, definitely. And I would also say, even if you are joining forces with these community organizations, that's not to say that if you truly feel called and have the knowledge and are equipped to do your own work, that's not to say that that moment won't come. It's just making sure that we're not bulldozing over the people who have already been dedicated to it. That is perfect and such a good reminder. The fourth step that we have here is to take targeted direct action. Now, I've heard this phrase, direct action, before. What does that mean? And what does it mean to take this step, specifically in the context of the example you were using earlier? 
So for targeted direct action, I like to say that because sometimes we can be pretty vague. You know, it's easy to donate to this super huge organization that's all over the world, which is great. Do that if you feel so called. But targeted direct action along the lines of assessing the local needs and partnering with these organizations is seeing what's around you in your community and your sphere of influence and saying, here's how I'm going to choose to spend these specific dollars in this specific town, in this state, in this country. So in that example, I think for a mother with a blog, how cool would it, would it be to research about the topic, find maybe mothers who have gone through this issue, find statistics of how that issue is affecting where you live or laws and policies that might need to be updated in your city or in your state and take the action to uh, get petitions signed or to write blogs to raise awareness or to start a fundraiser however you see fit, I think that is the difference between vague general action and targeted direct action. Like you're using your gifts, your passions, and your skill set to focus in on that specific area, that specific cause you've focused on and really making a difference there. And if we all do that, we're making a difference everywhere. It's great. That is so encouraging. I love that. And lastly, what is the final thing that we need to do? The last thing to do is to keep going. There really is no last thing to do. So I kind of love that. It's like a trick question. You have to pick another cause and keep going. And in the graphic itself, I kind of made a minor loop. It's like there's a little pathway to go back up and go back around again because we want this to keep going. And so the work is never over. And just because you've picked a specific cause and you've done a lot there doesn't mean that while you're doing that, you can't also do something else. And so I would say yes, to never feel as though you've arrived or that the work is done for you, but to consistently lean in and find ways to keep going because we should all keep going. I love those practical action steps. We can all find a cause that we care about zoom in a little bit closer, and then follow this roadmap to take direct action. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, Danny shares how she maintains hope despite all the challenges 2020 has thrown at us. And you might just find a reason to be hopeful too. We'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, if you think that you may be depressed or you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious, or you just want to take charge of your mental health, I want you to know that BetterHelp Online Counseling offers licensed professional therapists who are trained to listen and to help with issues like anxiety, grief, depression, difficulty sleeping, family conflicts, and more. I use BetterHelp. I love BetterHelp. And here's how the process works. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And then after you're matched, you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly phone or video sessions. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Just visit betterhelp.com slash good and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. BetterHelp is offering a special offer to Sounds Good listeners to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash good. That's betterhelp.com slash good. One more time, that's betterhelp.com slash good. This podcast is sponsored by Libro FM. Libro FM is the first and only company that lets you purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore. You can pick from more than 150,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from booksellers. I have been using Libro FM for months now before they were even a sponsor, and I just finished listening to Barack Obama's thoughtful new book, as well as Samantha Irby's hilarious book, Wow, no thank you. And for both purchases, my cute little bookstore, Broadway Books, was supported. With Libra FM, you get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company out there. (laughs) You know the name. But you'll be a part of a different story. One that supports 
community. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to get more books into your busy life. Listen while doing chores, walking the dog, or just relaxing at home. All you need is a smartphone and the free Libro FM app. As a special offer for Sounds Good listeners, get two audiobooks for the price of one, only $14.99, with your first month of membership with the code GOOD. All you have to do is visit the website Libro.fm, that's L-I-B-R-O dot F-M, and use the promo code GOOD to get started with two free audiobooks and to help support this show. Danny, I think that we all acknowledge that this year has been, like, for lack of a better word, bad. Like, there's been so much heartbreak and pain and injustice. And I think it's so valid to feel heartbroken about it. But I see that you are maintaining a sense of hope despite everything that's happening in the world. And I want to ask you, why do you feel hopeful in 2020 despite everything happening? and, And why might we all feel a sense of hope in the midst of all of this as well. So I've always been someone who was largely optimistic and positive. I, even in my Instagram bio, I had the word optimism in there for a very long time. And I recently changed it to the word hope because I felt like it better encompassed how I'm really feeling in this season. You know, I don't think that hope is toxic positivity. I don't think that hope is blind optimism. I simply believe that it is having faith that what's to come is better than what is now (laughs) and what has happened in the past. And I cling to that because I have to. I do this work with the hope that things will get better and that by doing my part, I can help change to take place. And so if I don't cling to that, there's nothing else that I can cling to. So yes, I'm very hopeful for the future and positivity and optimism still come and go in waves, but I'm more open to the idea that hope won't always feel warm and fuzzy, but I stay steadfast and I cling to the idea that better is coming. That's artist Danielle Koch. You can follow her on Instagram at ohhappydanny. She also sells prints and apparel so you can wear or display her beautiful artwork. This podcast was created by Good Good Good. At Good Good Good, we help you feel more hopeful and do more good. You can find more good news and ways to make a difference in our weekly email newsletter, our beautiful print good newspaper, or online at goodgoodgood.co. This episode was created by Kaylee Thompson, Megan Burns, Chad Michael Snavely, and me, Brandon Harvey. Please do us a favor by leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. And when you listen to an episode that you love, please share it on Instagram so we can reach more people with good news. And with that, that's a wrap for this week's episode. Find one actionable step you can take this week to make the world better. And we'll be back next week with more good news and good action. Sound good?